Hi everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Sky Towers, but before we do, we just want to remind you to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because we're going to have so many exciting videos throughout the rest of forever. Well, I don't know if that's true, but you don't want to miss out. So Sky Towers is designed by Charles Ward and it is published by X First Games. This game is all about the dangers of building tall towers. How hard it is to build them really tall. Yep. Got a babble situation going on. 100%. Yeah, you want to steer clear. Going to the sky. <laughs> no, what this is, this is more of an abstract card game. You are trying to uh, build up your buildings on these ranges of cards uh, from basically 1 to 10, trying to get your buildings to be 21 stories tall. Uh, and then you can score them and get kind of bonuses as well. Let me give you a quick overview of how to play. All right, we're setting up to play Sky Towers. We've got our main deck of cards here. We're gonna shuffle that up. Every player is gonna start with a hit, starting hand of five cards. But then also we have all these different bonus cards and all these different effects cards. So you can basically kind of throw them all in, or you can kind of go off this recommended list here of starting with, uh, starting with level one, you add in this top effect, and you add in this big bin bonus. And as you go on, you add more and more bonuses, more and more effects, until eventually you max out your New York. You've added in all of the different expansions, all the different bonus cards, all the different effects cards. Bonus cards are basically a way to score extra points. So basically there's gonna be some kind of parameter. This top one here, this, this starting one, it's called Big Ben. The first player to complete three towers, each containing the number 10, is going to be able to score that card. So there's all different bonuses, they all do something a little bit different, but basically some kind of parameter is laid out. The first one to achieve that gets to take that card in front of them. However, there is a twist. If someone later on also accomplishes that, they get to take that card from them. So there's a little bit of a benefit to doing it early, but at the same time, if someone follows up on you later on and takes that from you, they actually get to score that at the end of the game as long as they're the one holding it. The effects are basically special rules that are gonna be in effect uh, whenever certain numbers are played. So for instance, our starting one here, this is called top. This basically says whenever a number one one is played, the only thing that can go on top of that number one is more number ones. If that rule were not in effect, you could basically put a number 10 on top of a one, a one on top of a three, whatever the case is, kind of however you want to do it. But if that is in effect, only ones can be placed on top of other ones. All right, every player has a little player aid here, basically tells you your options on your turn. You're either going to be able to do build, draw, or demolish. And you're able to take two actions each turn, and they can be whatever you want them to be. For instance, on first turn, maybe we say draw, and then we do another draw. Or maybe on our next turn, we want to try to work towards that Big Ben theory. Maybe let's put down a number 10 card here at the start of a base and even a number nine on top of it. So now we're at 19. What we're trying to do by building our towers is we're trying to get to exactly 21. Once you get exactly 21 on your tower, you can score that card. What we're looking for is a different um, kites on the cards. If you see one of those yellow kites, that is a point. So some of these bigger numbers that are easier to achieve do not come with points on them generally. However, you might be using them to get to one of these bonuses. This one has three of those kites on it, which means it's worth three points. So that would be the strategy behind getting one of these out early so you can get something like that. So on our next turn, maybe we have a two in our hand here. We would take that, we would put it on top. We would now automatically score that tower. We're basically gonna put the whole thing face down on our action card, basically it means that's ready to score at the end of the game. We also used at number 10, so we are one third of the way to completing our bin, Big Ben bonus. That's really all there is to the game. You're gonna be using your actions to draw cards, and you're gonna build towers. Every once in a while you're gonna use that demolish action. The demolish action is basically a way to take one of your towers that you kind of have half constructed, and deconstruct it, taking all those cards, putting them back into your hand, so maybe you can use a different combination of those, tiles, of those cards on a different tower somewhere in your city. There is an optional blocking rule that you can add in once you're a little bit more experienced. And basically that says the top card of the towers that are to your right or to your left are going to affect what you can and cannot play. So for instance, once you play a tower, you have, cannot change its position. So for instance, this is our, our left side. This is our, our right side. We're here to start another tower. This would be on the right side. What this is saying is to the person to our right, if this is the, on the top of the tower that's closest to them, they cannot play any fours. And similarly, this is one on our left here, the play to our left. Uh, if this is the tower that's closest to them, whatever's on top of that tower, in this case a seven, they cannot play any sevens. And similarly, what they have going on is going to affect us as well. So for instance, if they have a seven over here, that's closest to us, we cannot play any sevens until that has changed. That is an optional rule, it's a little bit meaner, but it does add, allow for some more interactions between players. 
The game is going to keep on going until that entire deck has run out. At that point, every player is going to get one last turn, but this time, instead of getting two actions, they're going to get three actions. And then at that point, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the points that we have scored in all of our towers, we're going to add up all the points, bonuses that we have in front of us, all the kites that are on the bonuses, and we're going to tabulate our score. Whoever has the most points wins the game. The game does get increasingly more exciting the more bonuses you add in and the more effects you add in, so I would recommend kind of going through that quickly so that way you can add in a ton of effects, a ton of bonuses, so that way every card that you play has some kind of special ability. Maybe there's a card that gives your opponents a hand limit, or maybe a card that lets you draw extra cards, or whatever the case is, the more effects in play, the more crazy and more fun it is. Same thing with the bonuses. The more bonuses that are out there, the more bonuses that you're able to kind of go for, and it gives your turns a direction to head in. I really liked the bonus cards and how they gave you a direction to go in the game. It wasn't like you were just trying to find all the kites and put them in your tower. You had a goal that you were reaching out for. You had um, numbers that you were trying to achieve to get those different goal cards. So I really liked how those gave you a direction and a way to kind of manipulate your cards in that way. Things that you were trying to do instead of just randomly playing cards. I like the scalability in this game. Uh, so there are a number of different card effects, basically one through 10 essentially, and then you have lots of those bonus cards like Bethany mentioned. Now you can definitely just jump off, head, you know, right on in with all the card effects, play with all the bonus cards. And if you're an experienced gamer, you can do that and you yeah. probably won't have too many problems. But at the same time, if you're playing with younger people or maybe you want to experience the kind of the slow growth of the game, just choose one card effect to play with and just choose one bonus card to play with. It kind of, kind of gives, you, gives you guidelines. The more you play, the more things you add in. So yeah. I like that you kind of, it, you, it scales with you. As you're more experienced with the game, you get to play with more and more stuff and see more and more stuff until eventually you play with all of the effects, all of the bonuses, all at the same time. I like when games take a concept or another game and they like double gamify it. And I felt like this game just took blackjack and like made it for everybody. <laughs> like they just gamified that game. Let's, what, what, how could we take this concept and take the gambling out of it? And I feel like they did that in Sky Towers. The scoring is very clean. It's basically as you score these towers, as they get to 21, you take those cards, they put them underneath your, your action card. And then as you gain these uh, bonus cards, you put them in your play area. And they might get stolen from you later on. Yeah. But the point is that the, when the game ends, all you do is you count up the bonus cards, the kites that are on the bonus cards in front of you, yeah. and you count up the kites on the cards that you've earned. And that's it. There's just, there's no ambiguity. There's no weird stuff. It's just very clear. The cards you've earned, the bonuses you've earned, add them up. Yeah. I, I liked this game and I enjoyed it, but I almost wish that there was a little bit more. Like, um, you could have probably four times as many bonus cards and then just shuffle and deal out a certain amount, depending on how you like to play, how difficult are all the things you want to go for. So I would have liked to just have there been more things like that, or even more for the, the number cards that you could shuffle out and, and play different games of. So once you've experienced the full game, you can kind of mix and match things that you like. So it's not like you're playing the same game over and over again because what can end up happening is if you're playing with all of the cards out because we just started like that you kind of know what everybody's going for you kind of know what they're digging for but i just feel like if you shuffled in that variety it would just be really good but overall it was a fun game this is yeah this is a very interesting game uh just it's, it's simple it's in an it's, it's fun to play. Uh, I, I wish the simplicity came across better in the rule book. The rule book was, for as simple as the game as it is, the rule book kind of like took me on a little bit of a ride. You know, there's, there's more pages than I would have expected. I would have expected a three, four page rule book yeah. uh, for a, sim a simple card game like this. Um, they did give examples and things like that, but um, it's a lot simpler to play than, than the rule book would have you lead, led you to believe. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. You guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this game was provided to us by a publisher for in exchange for a fair and honest review. And if you want to see more stuff, check out over here to see something we think you might like. And over here, we think uh, that YouTube has picked out a great video for you. You're going to love. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.